Hi, it's Kane Hodder, Jason from Friday the 13th. You're watching Slash and Cast. Keep watching, or I'll kill you and your whole family. What's going on, horror fans? Welcome back to another episode of Slash and Cast. My name is Riley. That is Nick. Where we get things started, as always, a few announcements. First of all, check out our streams. We're coming down to the end of our winter break here, which means this is the last rally with a lot of streams, two a day, good times. Starting on Twitch every day, usually exclusively on Twitch, a lot of times playing Siege. We're going to sneak Call of Duty in there eventually, but Siege has just been dominant lately. It's yes. good stuff. Um, but like I said, that's exclusively on Twitch at twitch.tv slash slash cast. And then in the evenings, we usually do both. Of Friday the 13th, of course. And then we have some uh, sub, you know, playing with subs streams coming up very soon. Yes. So keep an eye out for that. Also, make sure you check out SlashCast.com. Still getting the grind going in there. Um, still pulling in writers, of course. Uh, but 2018, we're going to get that website going really strong and uh, keep a keep good flow going. You know, maybe we can actually be an actual resource. True. Battle of the games. You know? Yeah. Uh, make sure you check out our Discord server. It's officially partnered. It's a great place to catch all of our content, including every new episode of Slash and Cast when we go live. And it's home to our movie nights. Movie nights are exclusive to our Discord. Um, basically, you know, you sit back and relax. We got, uh, we're streaming it on Twitch now. You got three or four movies, usually four now, uh, with drive in type intermissions and elements in a pre show. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It is. It's a good time. So you should be a part of it. Yeah, you know, now that we're we're getting back into school in the next week or two, um, movie nights should be more common. Yeah, for sure. Because we're not going to be streaming as much. Correct. Correcte mundo. Uh, also, we have a new merch store. All right, hellojuniper.com slash slash and cast. Get your mugs, get your beanies, get your blankets, get your sweatshirts, all the goodies, slash and cast style. Um, that's also available at slash cast.com. Yes. Good stuff. Yes. Um, we're also, you know, working on a subreddit. You know, Reddit is hard. There's a lot of formatting to do, a lot of, you know, elements to put together to get our videos up. We got our website articles linked to that. Uh, if you, you know, want to go, there, you it's go a, it's, there, it's a huge work in progress. Uh, it's reddit.com slash r slash slash and cast. Uh, and if you want to help, uh, just send me a message on there and uh, we'll see if we can use your talents. Yeah. And this will be the first time I mentioned this and the last time I mentioned this outside of streams. We have a fan film, a Halloween fan film, that was never released. It was shot uh, damn near two years ago now. Uh, held on to it, but we're releasing that exclusively to our sponsors. Uh, sponsoring on YouTube is $5 a month. Uh, you give a bunch of stuff with that, including a badge next to your name and streams, uh, access to emotes and streams, stuff like that. But ultimately, you're supporting the channel, keeping us alive as we battle YouTube demonetization because we're a horror channel. Um, but like I said, we, we're, it, I'm pretty locked in this to be a one-time stream only. So I want to mention it in Slash and Cast that like we're going to stream the fan film exclusively to sponsors. So this is like really your last week to get in that sponsor rule, or you won't see the fan film, which isn't the big deal. If you but, but you know sponsors are cool. So uh, if you're interested, link in the description to sponsor. Yes. really appreciate it. Now let's dive in. Topics of the day. Opening up with Friday the game. Believe it or not, Friday the Thirteenth the game won best video game in Bloody Disgusting's Reader's Choice Awards, which they do every year. Um, not much really going against them. The Resident Evil 7 took second next to them, then Dead by Daylight, and then Evil Within 2. Yeah. Um, did F-13 deserve it? We've been already asked it several times. Did F-13 deserve it? Personally, yes. Uh, yeah, it did. Uh, F-13, while it was a bug-filled mess and it's had its ups and downs all over the place, mm -hmm. it was consistent. It The discussion it brought from an independent game like it was is unbelievable. Of course, a lot of that came from the title itself, but taking on a title like that with such a small, two very, very small companies, it, it's quite incredible what they've done. Yes. And I think I think the award they got for it uh, was well-deserved. And the fact that both of us can have 800 hours on the game yeah. and, and, and still enjoy it. Yeah, like, I mean, legitimately, we still enjoy you know, it. No, you've heard our, uh, our, uh, our constructive criticisms uh, but in past week's episodes, but if you... You could tell on our streams. If we weren't having fun, you would know. Yeah. We can't force that. We're not <laughs> yeah. that good at, at you know, pretending. <laughs> right. We're not actors, all right? No. So um, you can, you know, you can see in our streams, we still do enjoy it. We may get frustrated, <laughs> but we still do enjoy. Every game frustrates me. Watch me play Siege. You think I hate F-13? <laughs> Watch me play Siege. Um, yeah. So yeah, like we said, personally, we do agree, uh, you know, no contest with the, uh, the other nominees. Yeah. I think... 
uh, yeah, like it's not, not it's obviously not like the best like developed game. Oh no! But like it, it huge first in independent gaming, indie like, game, yeah, yes. like in general, huge strides for those. I mean, so many other look at all these games that are starting to push forward now in horror. Yes, which we'll talk about one in a little bit, and a lot of that has to do with Gun Media Phonics approach to F thirteen. Uh, and also transparency is coming a lot more key in, in game development now too and I think a lot of that was coming from them as well of yes. course that transparency is falling down a little bit let's step that back up because that was very key to the beginning of this game mm-hmm. let's keep the transparency going yes um, but yeah now, even now looking to the future of F-13 I, I am excited there are some things we want changed obviously and they appear to be being addressed yes um, so really excited for the next patch and then when Grendel and Jason X comes that's going to be exciting as well so let's uh let's hope for the best and let's see what hope 2018 can hold just as much success for F13 as 2017 did. Yes. Uh, now we're also going to go over the rest of Bloody Disgusting uh, Reader's Choice Awards. We're starting off with the best horror film of the year, which was It. Now I disagree with some of these that they have here. Yes. Um, simply because they are the Reader's Choice Awards. In my opinion is irrelevant because you guys did the voting. So. Right. Uh, but as for people's choice here, we have it, and uh, it was fantastic. I do think Get Out should have had that spot. Yes. Um, but it. I mean, for, for yeah, for originality, really just gives it another bump, and why yeah, it should have been the best horror film. Right. You're right. Now, uh, best actor in a film is Daniel Kaluuya. 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 I don't know. Uh, from Get Out, you know, he did a fantastic job. Yeah, he is great. Now, we personally, I think both of us uh, uh, think that there was a better option. Yeah. And that was uh, James McAvoy in Split. I think James McAvoy deserves best actor in uh, like an Oscar. Like, I think he deserves an Oscar. The fact that you can watch him change personalities. 24 different personalities. 24 per- different personalities, some right before your eyes. Yeah, it's impressive. That was so impressive, and it was a, a different person every time in seconds. Yeah, I think by far, I think he put off the best performance of uh, of 2017 I, in, in all film. Yes. I think he should get an Oscar yes, for it. I don't even think he was nominated for these uh, for these bloody disgusting awards. But um, he should have been, and that's our opinion. Yeah, he, he was incredible. Yes, real. it was really incredible. All right, best TV show. You know what it is. It's Stranger Things. It's going to win it for the next, like, three years. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it was fantastic. Season two, which, you, have you gotten through it? No. God damn it. Not yet. <laughs> but, I mean, I can I can already tell it's going to be a good one. Yeah, there. Uh, I, I think I personally enjoy Stranger Things 2 more than the first one. I've heard that. Simply because it's one of those situations where you already know the characters. And so you can just really grow with them. Yes. There are, there's episodes, you all know what episode I'm talking about. you've seen it, you know what episode I'm talking about. Yeah, that, I know what episode you're yeah, talking which about. Yeah, which takes away from it. But you get past that and, and it really is cool. Now, so. in, in our personal opinions, there were some other good ones. You know, The Exorcist. Uh, yeah. Another one, uh, Netflix's uh, Series of Unfortunate Events. Yeah. Personally, we loved season one. Yeah. And can't wait for season two. I mean, Slasher. Slasher. Could have got in there. Yeah, I, that's one definitely on my list as well. Yeah. Uh, now, for best actor in TV, it was Alfonso Herrera for The Exorcist. Yeah. And I mean, well deserved in terms yeah. of yes. horror and television. There's there's really in, not much competition there, uh, and I mean he sweeps it. So yes, that, that's that one well earned. Yes, well earned. Yes. Uh, best kill. All right. It's I, I mean Georgie. Come on, it, it, the Pennywise killing Georgie, classic, and then taking it from a much more closer to the book approach as they did in the yes. 2017 it. Uh, was really cool and well done. I think this was, I don't think there's any competition really in terms of kills this year. Correct. I think uh, I think it sweeps that one away. Correct. Now, best villain also goes to Pennywise in it naturally. Why not? Yeah. Now it's going to scoop a lot of these, including best final girl, which is Beverly Marsh in it. Uh, yeah, I, I can't really argue against that. You mm-hmm. could sort of push um, if you want to sort of push Get Out. But you can't even do Final Girl for like yeah, but uh, yeah. It, I think there's really no competition. It it had a sweep here. Uh, I mean, best final girl could have been uh, uh, Casey from Split. Yeah, that's. I think that's really the only other one that I can think of that uh, would is up there. Right. In terms of mainstream films, like uh, a lot of independent films aren't getting a lot of uh, cred here. Right. Which I'm, which is why I'm glad they have the best indie film award, which we'll get to in a second. Here. Yes. Uh, so for best scare, uh, was the Scarecrow kill when from when the Scarecrow came to life in Annabelle. Uh, yeah, that, I agree with this one. Yes. It came out of nowhere. I think actually one of the best scares in Annabelle, though, uh, came with the light bulb yes. slowly turning off. I mean, I like little things. Jump yeah. scares are lame. But yeah, best scare, uh, I think we can both agree with uh, the Scarecrow. Yeah, that one's really cool. Yes. And now we're back to best indie film, like I said, which goes to The Void. Definitely well-deserved. Independent film this year in horror was actually fantastic. It was the mainstream horror that was a mess. Well, uh, ind- independent film needs its love, too, and I'm glad The Void... The Void earned it. it yeah, really you cool. know, hopefully uh, with SlashingCast.com, we can, um, you know, put out more reviews and bring more of these indie films, these deserving indie films, to light. 
Yeah, exactly. It's one of the reasons we want to push it so hard. Yes. So. Um, you know, and now for the last award was best comic or graphic novel, The Walking Dead. Right. I do think Penny Dreadful should have taken it this year. Yeah. But it's all right. Walking Dead, it's always fantastic. And, and how much longer is it, you know, going to be? Um, yeah, I will. I mean, the, up there, the the comics they just keep going, bro. Like the yeah. show, the show is gonna end well before the comics do. Yeah. So, I mean, oh well. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's it this year for Bloody Disgusting's Reader's Choice Awards. Uh, if you want to get a closer look at them, the link in the description to Bloody Disgusting. Really cool though. I will point out though, they, they did. They got a bunch of you know horror actors to do a little openings for them for nominees, and it was shot at Days of Dead Chicago. We were right there, man. We're, we were. We, we right are right there. <laughs> we were there, dog. We were at the show. We saw the bloody disgusting. We saw the black curtain. <laughs> we saw their curtain. All right. I'm a little upset. Uh, keep us in mind for 2018. All right. Let's move on to our next line of news. Halloween. Now, no, no crazy news here. Last we learned, Nick Castle joined the official cast and is reprising the role of Michael Myers in the upcoming 2018 Halloween, which is a sequel, of course, to the original Halloween and disregarding to. The resurrection. Yes. Uh, but now we just learned that Christopher Nelson, who won a Best Achievement in Makeup Oscar for his work in Suicide Squad, has been chosen to lead the special effects department in the upcoming Halloween film. Now, I mean, come on. What a scoop. Yes. What a scoop. I, Suicide Squad, go watch. I mean, while you may hate the film. Story is lacking. Character <laughs> development a little lacking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you may hate the film, but it does look great. And obviously, makeup is fantastic too. I mean, you can look at literally everybody in the film. Yes, <laughs> literally everybody in the film looks great. So uh, excited to see where he takes it. Now he's previously worked on projects like Return of the Living Dead Three, the Kill Bill movies, Sin City, The Walking Dead, and The Tripper. Now joining Nelson will be Vincent Van Dyke, who is known for his work on Grey's Anatomy and Nip Tuck, uh, both super popular shows. Yeah. I used to love Nip Tuck back in the day. <laughs> back in the day, I used to watch Nip Tuck. Yeah. So uh, in other Halloween news. Tyler Maine, who played uh, Michael Myers in Rob Zombie's Halloween films, uh, had this to say about Nick Castle coming back uh, to reprise the iconic role. Quote, I couldn't be happier to hear that Nick Castle is coming back to play the role of Michael Myers in the new film. Thank you for letting me borrow the suit for a time. Shout out to John Carpenter, hashtag Jamie Lee Curtis, and all the OG crew coming back to the franchise. Hashtag can't wait, hashtag fanboy, hashtag Halloween. <laughs> uh, so cool. There, there's been some rumors going around about Tyler Maine, Daniel Harris, and, and you know, like... Being upset. Yeah, being upset. They're not upset. No. Of course they'd want to be in the film. But, I mean, Tyler Maine should have been well aware that he wasn't good. Tyler Maine's a goddamn monster. Yes, he is. Uh, and that image, that image of Michael Myers being that big was a Rob Zombie image, and it wasn't going to make it to the original. That being said, though, Tyler Maine... Uh, is one of the, the the highlights of Rob Zombie's uh, yeah uh, remakes yeah and he's just a really cool dude in general so yes. I'm glad he's he came out and said something cool like that yeah. good for him but uh, the new Halloween movie is set to begin filming in Charleston South Carolina this month I think they've already started I think the casting call back then was a bit of a delusion I think they're they're messing with us yeah um, I think they're already underway but as always we will keep you up to date on all things Halloween right here so if you haven't already you know what to do all right let's move on to our next line of news. Today is my birthday. Now, Wonder Game Studio has started crowdfunding for the game. Today is my birthday. Today is my birthday is a first-person survival horror game where you take on the role of Thomas, a photographer from the city. Drawing inspiration from classic survival horror games, you cannot fight your pursuers and must use your ability to parkour your way out of a chase and successfully evade enemies. Does it sound familiar? It sounds like Outlast, right? Yes. Um, way different mm. look than Outlast. Yes. But playability seems to play out like Outlast. Right. Uh, so, in Today is My Birthday, hell comes in the form of Wonder Park, an abandoned circus of terror and mystery surrounded by cryptic history and bone-chilling fear. As Thomas, you'll be wandering about the park in desperate hope to find some truth behind a series of disappearances that began after it closed and a way to leave. Uh, so this game was greenlit via Steam Greenlight uh, in mid-2017 and just recently launched their uh, Indiegogo campaign to crowdfund the completion of the game. Yeah. Uh, well, like I said before, it does sound like like Outlast, uh, which is why I think people really enjoy it, and you, and you should check it out. They've dropped some really cool things on it. Uh, now, as of right now, they haven't raised all that much money. No. We're looking at a few hundred dollars out of their $15,000 goal. Now, at $15,000, the game will be made single-player only as originally intended. However, at $50,000, the game will include a multiplayer mode as well. Okay. Uh, which is really intriguing. Uh, it's backwards F13 and definitely a lot cheaper. Now, what they've released so far, we got to look at it a, a while ago. Yes. Uh, and it looks really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so we are backing the game. Uh, so 
we're here to tell you that you should as well. Yes. If you're interested in asymmetrical horror like that, first person, if you liked Outlast, I think you're going to like this, especially yeah. the first Outlast, because it seems much closer to the first Outlast than it does the second one. Right. So I would I would recommend So that. now if multiplayer, you know, doesn't end up coming to the game, at least you got a, a really interesting uh, and good-looking uh, single-player uh, horror game. Yeah, exactly. And the key there is you cannot fight back. Yeah, it's it's you just gotta like run. Outlast, man. You got to be smart, strategic, uh, and it's going to be full of jump scares. And also, we're looking at a killer that's very similar to Leatherface from Text Chainsaw Massacre. Yes. And that's interesting as well. So it, I know you're not getting a Text Chainsaw Massacre game, but the killer is so similar yeah. at, that you're getting some vibes there. Right. And it's going to be interesting regardless. So, like I said, link in the description to their Indiegogo if you're interested. I, I think you should back it. I think it's a cool one to support for, and, you know, let's keep that independent stuff going. Yes. Let's keep that grind going for yes. horror games. Let's uh, let's keep her pushing. But with that, let's move on to our next line of news, the Slender Man trailer. Mm. It finally came. Uh, this is an upcoming film that was directed by Sylvain Wyatt, simply titled Slender Man. Now, the script was penned by David Burke and Mike Scannell. The official trailer has finally arrived for Slender Man. Uh, so, unfortunately, let's let's sit back. All right, and let's take a look at it, shall we? Roll the footage. Where is my daughter? People don't just disappear. There it is, the Slender Man trailer. It's exactly what we expected. Yeah. It's bad. It looks really, really bad. Um, basically, if you were to just take a step back and, you know, maybe squint a little bit, you might see the ring in there. It looked like the ring. What you really want to do is just close your eyes, plug your ears. <laughs> <laughs> and forget you just watched that. Uh, yeah, oh, it's, it's it's a mess all over the place. There's maggots and stuff popping on the screen. I'm telling you, it felt like the ring. It felt like a ring sequel. Yeah. And where the did you do you recall really seeing what we know as Slender Man? I I, I saw uh, a dark mist <laughs> like three times. Uh, uh. It looks. I'm deep down hoping it was just a, a, a bad trailer. Uh, we get those a lot. Um, especially now in this generation, trailers are just kind of shitty. Like we said, we didn't expect much, but that's what we got. <laughs> yeah, it's like we, oh, we, we were down here, <laughs> and, and you you, you were... hit down here. <laughs> you know, uh, so Slender Man, uh, it's not looking too good, but it does star Joey King, uh, Analyze Basso, Talitha Bateman, Julia Goldini, Teles, uh, Jazz Sinclair, and Alex Fitzalan. Um Okay, it it just 
it doesn't it doesn't look good. No. Um, so here's a synopsis for the Slenderman movie. Uh, in a small town in Massachusetts, four high school girls perform a ritual in an attempt to debunk the lore of Slenderman. When one of the girls goes mysteriously missing, they begin to suspect that she is in fact his latest victim. Hey, you could ju- just reading the synopsis, you already get an instant sense of dumb characters. Yes. And that's just not a role you really want to go down. The, uh, the fact that that is the synopsis we have <laughs> is um, I, I can't even find the words to express <laughs> how bad that synopsis is and how bad this movie uh, is looking right now. Yeah, it's we're going down a Bye Bye Man trail. Yes. And, and that, like, I'm, it actually, like, legitimately felt like Bye Bye Man. And that movie was just piss bad, like horrible. Yes. Now, are we gonna get you know to know this the Slender Man that we know? You know, notes on the trees, <laughs> no. uh, coming out of nowhere. Uh, TV no. static everywhere. Yeah. No, I don't think so. No. And uh, why? The real shame is is that this is mainstream horror right now, which is this is one of the reasons 2018 was so tough because you have. One, it's not very original. You're taking ideas from a, a video game that was very successful. Uh, and while there is potential there for Slender Man film, don't get me wrong, when you give it to somebody that just doesn't give a shit and they just shit all over it like they did with this trailer, at least what I'm seeing so far, it kills mainstream horror, which is why you got to look at independent horror more than we used to, yeah. simply because mainstream horror just doesn't really give a shit anymore. Uh, listen, if you go see this movie... You're going to be supporting po- just poor and careless filmmaking. Yeah, it's a shame because it's it's very easy. It's a very simple date night movie, exactly. which is why horror, mainstream horror still makes so much money. And that's, just, and that's why this movie is going to make its money back. Yeah, and we just saw Insidious 4 drop $29 million on, on its opening day. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Insidious 4, while it's okay, yes. it, I don't think... It, I don't think the Insidious franchise stayed loud the way it is, but I am proud of them for s- still producing decent quality content. We'll have a review on that soon on Slashcast.com, yes. so you should definitely keep keep tight to the website, all right? Yes. Uh, but like I said, Slender Man, it's poop. It's poop. It doesn't look good. I would avoid it at all costs. No. Uh, with that, let's move on to our last topic of the day, which is way more positive. Yes. Okay? Strangers Prey and Night just got a brand new extended trailer, which we are going to watch now. This one, this one, you can don't have to squint. Don't no, have to close your eyes. Just no, get a good, uh, unplug your ears. Unplug your ears. Get a good look. Here we go. Strangers pray at night. Extend the trailer. Take a look. This place seems empty. I think everybody leaves after Labor Day. This is nice, right? There's someone else standing here. Is Tamara home? I think you have the wrong trailer. I thought we were all alone. What the hell? Dad? That's a lot better. Yes. Okay. Now there are some little things in there that we could critique. Uh, first of all, I, I think they may have shown a little, little too much. Yes. Uh, that's what we just talked about earlier, man. This this generation of trailers, it 
always just shows too much. Um, but that being said, it's really it wasn't too painful. Now this is the extended trailer. Right. Now that first trailer that we got that I we talked about a week ago, two weeks ago. Yeah. Or two weeks ago was it hooked us. It yeah. really did, and I I do personally like that better than this extended the, trailer yeah. because it didn't show as much, and I felt like uh, it usually the, goes for any film though. Yeah, and the song I think you're alone now by Tiffany. It, uh, it never gets old, man. No, no, <laughs> I fit that. I think that fit more perfectly in that uh, in that first trailer rather than this extended trailer, but it still worked. Uh, it, it it just that song just puts the trailer together so perfectly, because yeah. um, you know they think they're alone, right. <laughs> right. I think uh, this trailer won't give you any more than the other ones did. Right. If you weren't sold in the first ones, you're not going to be more sold now. But the one thing I think that I really take from these trailers as I see more and more of the film, the trailer park element is really cool. Yes. And, and adding that, one, the sense of isolation, the the sense of, well, I mean, you, trailer parks, like, wow, there's a lot of very wealthy people in trailer parks. There's just a sense of, like, lack of of help yes in terms of having a trailer park i don't know how to explain it just like it seems there's less people to rely on when you're stuck out there by yourself yes. um it's also the idea of running around a trailer park is creepy to me yeah so there's a lot to play with there i hope they run with it and it looks like they did especially the truck on fire down the, the bridge yes. all looks really exciting uh, yeah this is going to be one of the the few movies we go see in theaters uh, there aren't that many good ones. Uh, you watch last week's episode where we talk about our top 10 anticipated in 2018. This is, yeah, this is one of the, probably one of the only ones we're going to see in theaters and one of the only ones that we want to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Uh, it was, it's at our number two with Halloween at number one. Uh, really excited for it. Yes. So uh, keep, keep going. Yes, March. March. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, you know, it sucks though, that gap between films we want to see, like March to October. That's a long wait, man. That's yeah. like that's like seven whole months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh well, though. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Question of the day: Are you going to go see *Strangers Pray at Night*? Please let us know. And also, did you enjoy the first one? Because really, I think if you didn't enjoy the first one, you're not going to enjoy the second one. Right. Uh, it, it definitely has the, the very similar and same vibes. But uh, most people did enjoy *The Strangers*. Uh, so hey, let us know. With that, that's gonna wrap up Slashcast today. If you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe, like, and as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. Editor, roll that outro. Hey you, thanks for watching this episode of SlashCast. If you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like and click that box right down there to check out last week's episode. Also, if you want to check out the film the fans are calling the best fan film of all time, make sure you click that box right down there to check out our Friday the 13th fan film. While you're at it, click that circle right there to subscribe to our channel and never miss a video again. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.